In a world where each state of the US is independent, things could get pretty heated. Some of these new nations would have booming economies, while others would control energy and food resources that others desperately need. Some territories would definitely fare better than others. Several states have larger economies than most countries in the world, from Alabama to Wyoming. This is what would happen if the USA broke up into 50 different countries. Each country would not be created equal. We're going to start with the ones that would struggle the most and then work our way up to the states that would have no problem if they were independent. Where does your state fall on the list, and how well would it do as a country? Let's find out. Number 50. Mississippi has an annual GDP of around $125 billion. This puts it as the 35th largest economy in the United States. However, its nominal GDP per capita, or how much money the average person generates for the economy, is the lowest of the newly formed countries, at 42411 per person. Mississippi's other problem is that it constantly ranks last in health and education sectors out of all of the former 50 states. It has access to the Gulf Coast and the Mississippi River that runs through it, which would help move its main exports to other nations. However, this would only be useful if others wanted what Mississippians had to offer. This mostly consists of petroleum and coal. The fact that the country of Mississippi would run into all sorts of societal issues would inhibit its ability to function as an independent nation. The next newly formed country's biggest problem isn't the nations that surround them, but the chaos the weather can cause. Number 49. Oklahoma's GDP is around $207 billion a year. The average Oklahoman only generates around $51,861 a year for the economy. Their most lucrative exports are livestock and machinery, but the fact that the new nation is stuck in the middle of the continent with no major waterways makes it extremely difficult for Oklahoma to generate revenue through trade. It also doesn't help that the country sits in the middle of Tornado Alley, which would mean the government would constantly be funneling resources and money into rebuilding its infrastructure. This could lead to cutbacks in other important sectors like the military or healthcare. That being said, the McAllister Army Ammunition Plant is located in Oklahoma, which means it could arm its citizens with enough bullets to invade neighboring territories to gain more resources. Number 48. Kentucky's economy is only slightly better than Oklahoma's at $207 billion a year. Its main exports are transportation equipment, livestock, and tobacco, although perhaps it could ramp up fried chicken production to supplement its other exports. Either way, it's nowhere near the coast or any major waterway, meaning that this new nation would be pretty reliant on its immediate neighbors as trade partners. The Kentuckians might take up arms to try to invade neighboring countries, but the sad fact is they wouldn't get very far without a way to generate more revenue. Number 47. Alabama has an annual state GDP of around $247 billion. This puts it almost in the exact middle of the pack for economy size. However, its GDP per capita is rather low at 49027 Alabama has direct access to the Gulf of Mexico, even if its coastline is a minuscule 60 miles long. This would still help slightly with trade. However, it's very likely that Alabama would lose this sliver of coastline to the behemoth southeast of it as Florida looks to expand its borders. The nation of Alabama's main export is transportation equipment and chickens, which means as long as Alabamans don't get tired of public transportation and poultry, they'll do okay. Number 46. Arkansas only has a GDP of around $145 billion and is the second lowest nominal GDP per capita after Mississippi. It will be tough going for Arkansasers if their state becomes a country, as they just don't have money to support their citizens. Arkansas does have access to the Mississippi River, but not to the Gulf, which could inhibit its ability to trade its exports, which consists mainly of rice, chicken, and transportation equipment. The lack of basic social programs could lead many members of the population to jump ship and seek asylum in a neighboring country with more resources. The next country may have the most apt name for its citizens out of any of the newly formed nations. Number 45. Idaho produces a lot of potatoes, along with computer and electronic parts. However, it only generates around $94 billion a year in GDP, while the average Idahoer generates $49,616. And yes, it is a little ironic that hoer is one of the official names for someone from Idaho, as there will be a lot of that to produce enough potatoes to support the nation. It's not clear if Idaho's neighbors will become aggressive, but if the countries from the west decide to invade, Idahoers could head to the mountains in the north of the country and then seek asylum in Canada. Number 44. Missouri has access to the upper Mississippi River, which it could use to move its main exports of transportation equipment and Budweiser, which was first brewed in St. Louis. It has the 20th largest economy in the United States, with a GDP of around $360 billion. However, it would likely need to receive food and energy resources from other countries, which does not put it in a very good bargaining position. It is unlikely that the surrounding nations would be willing to trade vital resources for Bud Light. Number 43. Montana has the fourth smallest GDP in the United States, at $59 billion annually. 
The minimum wage is just over 9 bucks an hour, making Montanans not the wealthiest population in the recently separated US. But what it lacks in money, Montana makes up for in beauty with sprawling plains and part of the Rockies near its western border. Its main exports are chemicals and wheat, which it would need to ship through its neighbors as there are no waterways or oceans nearby. Although perhaps the Montanans could ally themselves with Canada since they share 545 miles of borders, more than any other country in the region. Number 42. New Mexico has a lot of desert and not a lot of resources. This makes it difficult to thrive as a country. Its GDP is just under $110 billion. Although one thing New Mexico has going for it is that it has a lot of military testing sites. This can mean that there are stockpiles of weapons from years past just lying around waiting to be repurposed. So maybe New Mexicans could launch a tactical strike on its neighbors to secure more resources. Unfortunately, if Texas felt the need to invade New Mexico, there would be little they could do to stop it. New Mexico might have old missiles, but the next country has one of the most influential kings in the world. Number 41. Tennessee could keep its citizens happy through a whiskey-for-all policy. Whatever's left over then could be sold to its neighbors to increase its $418 billion GDP to even higher levels. Most of the exports of Tennessee are transportation equipment and cotton. But the cultural significance that the new country of Tennessee holds for music lovers might allow them to spread their influence across the lands. Plus, Elvis, the king of rock and roll, is buried there. This could make the country a pilgrimage site for fans from other nations, such as Florida. Number 40. West Virginia will have no problem producing its own energy, as it's one of the leading miners of coal and ore. However, its pollution and greenhouse gas emissions will have ramifications for the entire planet. If every state became its own country, many might transition to renewable energy, so they aren't reliant on other countries for their energy needs. This would severely hurt West Virginia's economy and bring down its already small $87 billion GDP. Then again, until most countries stop relying on fossil fuel for energy, West Virginia might be a relatively powerful country. West Virginia miners blow the tops off of mountains to mine ore, but this next nation has a set of gigantic mountains which might help them when the state becomes independent. Number 39. Wyoming may be at the bottom of the list of newly formed countries alphabetically, but it has a massive amount of land that contains parts of Yellowstone and the Grand Tetons. However, it has the second smallest economy out of all the countries with a GDP of $41.5 billion. This mostly comes from chemicals and wheat that it ships to other regions. Yet, since the population of Wyomingites is small, around 575,000, its output per person is high at 71,911. The main problem for Wyoming is that they just don't have enough citizens to form a military that would be able to protect all of its borders. Number 38. Arizona brings in around $411 billion annually, mostly from computer and electronic parts manufactured within its borders. However, the new nation lacks substantial food and water sources, which means it would need to get them from another country. And in a best-case scenario, Arizona could ally itself with California. In a worst-case scenario, its citizens would starve to death. Also, the population growth of Arizonians, not to be confused with Amazonians, is slowly declining as the older generations are dying off and birth rates can't keep up. This would make the new country vulnerable to the two much more powerful territories to its west. Each state has its own pros and cons, but access to resources will always be a point of contention between nations. Number 37. Indiana has a GDP of around $420 billion. It's also pretty self-sufficient. The country of Indiana would continue to create chemicals, machinery, and soybeans to ship to other regions. Another main export of the region is corn, which is a vital source of food for many people. This puts Indiana in a dangerous position as it must feed the Hoosiers living within its borders while keeping its neighbors happy so they don't invade. Unfortunately, the nation to the north is likely to need a large amount of resources to try and ramp up the production of one of its failing economic industries. Number 36. Iowa is in an even harder position than Indiana, as it's the United States' leading producer of corn. This means Iowans or Hawkeyes that live in the country will need to ramp up their production if they want to have a surplus to ship to other areas. However, Iowa is landlocked, which could cause transportation problems. Its GDP is around $220 billion annually with the average citizen contributing around $68,849 to the economy. But like with Indiana, Michigan might be a threat to the nation. The next nation was made famous on the big screen by Dorothy, her dog Toto, and a really big tornado. Number 35. Kansas doesn't have a ton to offer in exports, but it does produce a large amount of wheat, soybeans, and beef. So if newly formed countries in the area have a hankering for cow meat, they might come knocking on Kansas' door. That being said, with a population of 2.9 million, Kansans probably have enough cows and soybeans to share. The country's annual GDP is around $192 billion per year. This makes the country self-sustainable while also being able to produce enough goods to trade with its neighbors. However, being landlocked in the dead center of the continent could hurt the country if it wants to try and branch out to trade with faraway lands. Number 34. 
Louisiana has a lot going for it, but it also has some major problems. Its location is excellent for exporting petroleum and coal products along with its seafood. However, its nominal GDP per capita is around $55,000, which is low when compared to the working population that lives there. Louisianians could be self-sufficient, but some of their neighboring territories might start to get hostile in order to gain access to their coastline and natural resources. This puts Louisiana in a difficult spot as it harvests resources from its south coast while trying to defend the rest of its borders. Number 33. Maine would do pretty well as its own nation. There are huge amounts of land that have been untouched by humans and a plethora of natural resources along its bountiful coastline. However, even with all those natural resources, it lacks social programs for the Mainers who live in more rural areas. Maine likely would be able to sustain itself, but it might have a difficult time getting all of its citizens unified to support the new national government of the country. Its annual GDP is only $76 billion, making it the eighth smallest economy out of all the new countries. Although a bigger problem might be that many in northern Maine more closely identify with Canada than Maine itself. This could lead to a part of the newly formed country seceding and joining Canada as a new territory. We've now reached one of the nations that could have expansionist tendencies to further its own goals. Number 32. Michigan has a lot going for it, from manufacturing centers to access to Great Lakes. However, the state seems to constantly need bailing out. Michigan receives billions of dollars in federal aid annually, even though it only generates $568 billion in GDP. Maybe the Michiganders can strike a deal with Canada, as they're just across the lake, and sell more goods that way. The problem is Canada would need to be willing to trade for fish and cars, as those are two of Michigan's main exports. In order for the country to continue manufacturing vehicles, it will need a massive amount of resources from beyond its own borders. This could lead to hostile tendencies, as Michigan tries to claim land all around it to support its manufacturing infrastructure. Number 31. Nebraska will have no shortage of food as it exports already more cattle than any other former United States. It also grows huge amounts of grain and corn, which is why people from Nebraska are called corn huskers. Like other food producing countries, Nebraska will have to keep an eye on its neighbors to make sure they don't try to invade to secure more food for their own citizens. Nebraska generates around $150 billion annually, most of which comes from crops and cows. Alfred Air Force Base is located within its borders, but Nebraskans likely wouldn't have the manpower to fend off an attack if invaded. This next newly formed country might get lucky, as it'll be the gambling destination for people across the world. Number 30. Nevada would likely find a way to welcome people from all other countries to help maintain its gambling economy. The country of Nevada is mostly made up of desert, but this would provide an excellent opportunity to harness massive amounts of solar energy. Its main exports are gold and other metals, which along with tourism brings in around $193 billion a year. After a while, Nevadans might need to make deals with the surrounding territories to gain access to more water and food. Then again, they can always ask the aliens at Area 51 for some help. Number 29. Ohio would be somewhat of a wild card. Buckeyes have very different views on how their state should be run, depending on who you ask. This could lead to internal conflict even once they become their own country. That being said, Ohio would be able to produce most of its own food, and it currently has a GDP of $736 billion, putting it in the top five largest economies of the former United States. This will all be for nothing, though, if the new nation is torn apart by political differences once it gains its independence. These next two countries have the same first names but very different problems. Number 28. South Carolina has a large coastline that would provide the country with food and a means of exporting products. These exports mostly consist of produce and transportation equipment. However, it has a relatively small economy, with a GDP of $270 billion and a GDP per capita of only $52,031. This is the ninth lowest per capita GDP out of all the former U.S. states. South Carolinians will likely be able to sustain themselves, but it will by no means be a rich country. This could lead to them trying to get back together with their northern brethren. Number 27. South Dakota may share the same first name as the previous country, but it's a very different situation. South Dakotans would have an almost unlimited supply of corn, grains, and wheat. This could get a little tedious after a while, but they could trade with the surrounding regions for whatever else they needed. Their lack of waterways or coastlines means South Dakota will probably rely on their neighbor to the north and the countries around the Great Lakes. However, the reason there's a South and a North Dakota is that the people in the two regions couldn't agree on where the capital should be. This is still a point of contention for some, which might lead to leaders of both Dakotas to make rash decisions. Number 26. North Dakota has some of the same issues as its southern neighbors. However, it has a few unique ones of its own as well. North Dakota is the second coldest state after Alaska, and much of Alaska sits in the Arctic Circle, so you can imagine how frigid North Dakota can get. 
The main exports of the North Dakotan country are petroleum, coal, and tractors, which will pose a problem to their economy if other newly formed countries start relying more and more on renewable energy. North Dakota has a GDP of around $2 billion more than its southern neighbor with the same name at around $63 billion. But the Dakotas might end up putting their differences aside and form a partnership. North Dakota will supply the tractors while South Dakota will ship their agricultural products up north. Number 25. Utah doesn't have a ton to offer in terms of exports. Its annual GDP is around $220 billion, which mostly comes from livestock and metals. However, this sense of community, especially among religious groups such as the Mormons, could help unify the Utahns in a newly formed country. There isn't much surrounding territories that would want within its borders, so Utah doesn't really need to worry about being invaded. But it would definitely want to become close with its neighbors for trade purposes. Number 24. Wisconsin is an unassumingly powerful new country. It exports machinery, computers and electronics, transportation equipment, processed foods and chemicals. This brings in $366 billion annually. It has access to the Great Lakes, and it can feed its Wisconsinites with endless amounts of cheese. In exchange for manufactured goods, it can pretty much get any other food or resources it needs from surrounding countries. With large amounts of territory comes large amounts of problems, and the next new country will definitely find this out. Number 23. Alaska is the largest country formed by the separation of the United States. However, its population of around 730,000 is nowhere near large enough to oversee the 665,400 square miles of land they control. The main exports of the country are seafood, but they also have a massive amount of petroleum if they ever need to tap into it. For being such a huge territory, Alaska's GDP is only around $55 billion. However, the land is so bountiful it can sustain all of its citizens and many more if needed. The only problem is that Alaskans would never be able to protect their country from a Canadian invasion if it ever happened. Number 22. Colorado has a lot going for it. Their mountains are beautiful but also serve as a natural barrier to protect them from anyone coming from the west. Colorado is also home to several Air Force and military bases, which would protect its land from enemies. The new country brings in around $422 billion by exporting aircraft engines, beef, and medical instruments. Plus, Coloradans are consistently considered some of the happiest people in the United States. This might be thanks to its early adoption of recreational marijuana and microbreweries. Number 21. Delaware is small but mighty. Each Delawarean generates around $80,446 to create a GDP of $81 billion annually. For such a small state with less than a million people, that's pretty good. They can produce a lot of their own food, including soybeans, and have direct access to the Atlantic Ocean. The only downside is that being such a small nation means that their neighbors can bully them around. But Delaware might be able to use its wealth to buy powerful friends. And speaking of small countries, number 20. Hawaii is pretty much on its own already. The islands lay about 2,500 miles across the Pacific Ocean from the coast of California. They grow most of their own crops and raise their own livestock. There's already a naval base set up on the island of Oahu, which would serve as protection. Although its remote location likely means no one would want to attack it, Hawaii has a GDP of around $90 billion, which comes from seafood and agriculture, along with iron and steel scrap and airplane engines. When the United States broke up, Hawaii went from being the Aloha State to the Aloha Country. Number 19. Illinois is conveniently located next to Lake Michigan, which is great for trade. It's the leading exporter of soybeans and the second largest exporter of corn in the former United States. Illinoisans enjoy a booming economy that brings in around $938 billion a year. The new country doesn't really need much from its neighbors, which might lead them to adopt an isolationist policy. Number 18. Maryland boasts a GDP of over $438 billion. This is part of the reason why Maryland households have some of the highest earnings in what used to be the United States. Its main exports are transportation equipment, but it also grows a large amount of soybeans. It has over 3,000 miles of coastline, which provide an abundant marine resource and allows for easy importing and exporting. Although, like any small nations, Marylanders need to keep an eye on their neighbors. It would be all too easy for the countries of Virginia or Pennsylvania to conquer them. Which leads us to a country that already has all of the government buildings it'll ever need. Number 17. Virginia would likely envelop Washington, D.C. into its borders once it became its own nation. Although, like the Vatican City or the Republic of San Marino, D.C. would become a country within a country. But for all intents and purposes, it's now a part of Virginia. This puts the new nation's GDP to around $600 billion, but it's already got government buildings and a large population of politically-minded folk that try to run their new country. It has a large amount of fertile land as well as 7,213 miles of coastline. As long as its neighbors play nicely, Virginians will do just fine for their new country. Number 16. Minnesota is the fourth largest exporter of food in the former U.S. It provides it with a GDP of $412 billion annually. 
It also houses the Mall of America inside its borders, which for better or worse, provides Minnesotans with something to do. The country exports computers and electronics on top of their crops, meaning they'll likely make strong allies with their neighbors, especially Canada to the north. It might already seem like this next former state is its own country, but how would it actually fare on its own? Number 15. New Hampshire's motto is live free or die, which pretty much sums up the sentiment of many of its citizens. There's no income tax, and car insurance is optional. Basically, the transition from state to full-blown country would be a relatively easy one for them. The New Hampshireites are hardy, and although they have large amounts of resources and farmable land, the winter can get brutally cold and snowy. Let's just say the neighboring countries like Vermont and Massachusetts might want to keep an eye on New Hampshire, as they're somewhat of a wild card. Number 14. North Carolina exports a lot of tobacco. In fact, they are the leading exporter of the plant out of all of the former U.S. North Carolinians also grow a lot of their own crops and have a large coastline. The new country could definitely be self-sufficient, but it would also likely find companionship with like-minded countries to the north, south, and west. Its GDP is around $655 billion, which is generated by a combination of agriculture and manufacturing of healthcare equipment. Number 13. Oregon could be one of the hippiest countries to come out of the breaking up of the U.S. Between food from Portland and wine from the Willamette Valley, Oregonians have a lot of good food and drink within their borders. The GDP of the country is around $267 billion, but the citizens of the country would rather spend time outdoors enjoying the forests and coastline instead of making money. Oregon also exports computer and electronic goods to support its cash flow. There is plenty of land to grow crops and raise livestock as well, which would mean Oregon has little need for the countries that surround them. Number 12. Georgia has a lot of peaches, millions of peaches, but they might need to rely on their five military bases to deal with their rowdy neighbors from the south. Georgia, like several other states, has already tried to leave the U.S., but it didn't really go great the first time. It might go better this time around. Besides peaches, the main exports of Georgia are transportation equipment, metal, and nuts. The land is fertile and abundant, which allows for the growth of crops to feed all the Georgians within the country's borders. Georgia also controls 110 miles of coastline that can be used to transport goods to the nations along the eastern coast. All in all, the GDP of Georgia is around $683 billion, which makes it the eighth largest economy in the newly formed countries that were once a part of the U.S. Number 11. Pennsylvania is a manufacturing giant with the sixth largest GDP to come out of the broken up USA at $839 billion. There are eight Fortune 500 companies in Pittsburgh alone, and that's not even the largest city, with that title going to Philadelphia, which has over a million more people in Pittsburgh. As an independent nation, the Pennsylvanians, or Pennamites, can grow more than enough food to sustain themselves. Plus, they have large communities of Amish to fall back on if they need well-made furniture and delicious food. Their largest export is chemicals, but they rival most other states in dairy production and crops as well. And if Pennsylvania could agree on an alliance with New York, nothing in the Northeast could stop them. Number 10. Rhode Island might be the smallest state, and it's not really an island, but it sits in an advantageous location along the New England coastline, although it might need to be wary about its neighbors in Connecticut, as the Rhode Island Territory would greatly increase their access to the ocean and the rest of the East Coast. Rhode Island has a GDP of around $66 billion, which comes from miscellaneous manufacturer commodities. This actually raises some red flags about the new nation. What are they up to? What are they manufacturing? And why are they being so secretive about it? Either way, as long as Rhode Island doesn't get consumed by the other nations around it, the Rhode Islanders would be able to take care of themselves. And speaking of threats to Rhode Island, number 9. Connecticut is a wealthy state. Its nominal GDP per capita is 82,233, although most people in the former state make their money elsewhere, like New York and Massachusetts. This means Connecticut might set itself up to be Switzerland of North America by creating a safe haven for rich people to put their money. Then again, Connecticuters could have their eye on expansion and power, so look out, Rhode Island. Number 8. Vermont has more than just maple syrup. No, really. In fact, the Green Mountain State produces a lot of its own energy through hydroelectric power and other renewable sources. This provides it with a means to be self-reliant, especially when you take into consideration the amount of dairy cows and crop fields within its border. And there's plenty of lands for the Vermonters to expand into if needed, while the Green Mountains provide a strategic advantage if they're ever invaded. And although it has the smallest GDP of all the former United States, its nominal GDP per capita is still $56,028. People in Vermont are happy, healthy, and self-reliant. Number 7. Washington is tucked up in the northwestern corner of what used to be the United States, which means the only other two nations it needs to worry about are Oregon and Montana. 
Since both are pretty well off in terms of food and resources, Washington will probably be left alone. Of course, if Canada gets frisky and wants more land, Washington may be its first target. The Washingtonians have fertile lands and rugged terrain running through the middle of the state. It has a GDP of $668 billion and an astonishing $86,265 GDP per capita, which puts it just behind Massachusetts and New York. The country's main exports are seafood, aerospace products and parts, cement, concrete, and frozen french fries. If they ever did need an ally, they'd probably team up with like-minded people in Oregon to the south. The next former state has a bit of a bad reputation, which likely wouldn't change when it becomes its own nation. Number 6. Florida would do extremely well on its own as an independent country. It would be easily defendable as the northern border is the only place ground forces could invade. Plus, once Florida is its own nation, it probably would start weaponizing alligators without pesky animal rights organizations looking over its shoulder. Florida's GDP is around $1.2 trillion, which comes mostly from exporting computers and electronics, aircraft parts, and cell phones. There are huge amounts of land in the middle of the Floridian country that can be used to grow crops and an endless supply of citrus fruit. Also, Florida already has nine established military bases that it can use to keep itself isolated from the rest of the world, and Disney World, although for some reason, it seems more likely that Florida would use their military to invade their neighbors. We've now reached the top five most powerful new nations to come out of the broken up United States. Number 5. New Jersey might be considered the armpit of New York to some, but even though parts of this new nation are smelly due to waste treatment and power production near New York City, it is a wealthy place. New Jersey's GDP is $672 billion, and it can leverage its position to get its neighbors to do what it wants. For example, huge amounts of imports and exports come through New Jersey ports before they reach the rest of the former US. There are numerous manufacturing hubs that can pump out products for the New Jerseyan population or for export to other nations. And there is a reason it's called the Garden State. Although you might not think of New Jersey as being bountiful, the lands in the middle of its territory are fertile and can produce crops for the masses. As long as it can leverage its position and manufacturing capabilities to keep its neighbors happy and stop them from invading, New Jersey will do just fine as a nation. Number 4. Massachusetts has a lot going for it. Boston is the largest city in New England and provides the state with a means to move its exports to other regions in the world. The social systems put in place are top-notch, with education and healthcare being two of the main focuses of this new country. This wouldn't be the first time Massachusetts would be demanding their independence, as revolution is in Massachusettsans' blood. They oftentimes prefer the name Bay Starters or, in extreme circumstances, Mass Holes. Although it only has the 12th highest GDP out of the former US, its GDP per capita is $91,129, putting it only behind New York. And with a large number of hardworking blue collared workers at its disposal, Massachusetts can ramp up production on whatever it needs. Number 3. New York is much more than just the city. The state is huge, it extends from the Atlantic Ocean to the Great Lakes. This means there are multiple ports of entry and ways to move exports out of the new nation. New Yorkers are businessmen, farmers, and manufacturers. Across the country, there are different goods produced and shipped to their neighbors and across the oceans. New York's GDP is almost $1.9 trillion, while each person contributes around $93,463 to this number. New York is already in a position of power in terms of world finance and policy decisions as Wall Street and the UN are both located in Manhattan. The only way that New York would not be able to sustain itself is if all the former other United States decide to team up together and invade New York's lands. Number 2. Texas Do we need to say more? It's big, it's proud, it's got a lot of guns. In fact, Texas had 1,006,555 licensed guns within its borders in 2021. This doesn't count all of the rural Texans who may have a few unregistered firearms in their possession. Texas has tried to become its own state a few times in the past and still threatens to succeed every now and then. Texas would probably do fine on its own as it has huge amounts of oil, cotton, and beef that it exports to other parts of the world. It might have a difficult time defending all of its borders as there are 268,597 square miles of land to protect, but the fact that they've already started building a wall and there are so many gun owners means gathering up a militia won't be too hard. The Texan GDP is only second to California at almost $2 trillion annually. Number 1. California is practically already its own country. It has a GDP of $3.5 trillion, which is more than all the former United States GDPs combined if you exclude Texas, New York, and Florida. To put this into perspective, there are only three countries in the entire world that have a GDP higher than California, and they are Germany, Japan, and China. California is incredibly wealthy, full of resources, and has access to huge amounts of coastline. 
There is nothing that can stop it if the former state becomes its own country. Californians likely wouldn't even notice much of a change in their day-to-day -day lives once the government's restructured as they have everything they need within their borders. The new nation already has over a dozen military bases to protect itself, plus a population of around 40 million people, making it the most populous of the new countries. The scary thing is, if California wanted to incorporate other territories into its new country, there would be very little anyone could do to stop it. Now watch What If World Without the US Part 1, or check out What If Adolf Hitler Woke Up in the 21st Century.